families will not be satisfied knowing that the killer is still alive. But as a society, we are <coughs> obligated to do better than to respond with a gut primal response, regardless of how natural that response that response may feel. Our justice system is currently a is a retributive justice system which only heightens the pain and deepens the wounds of the families of victims of murder. The families of perpetrators and the perpetrators themselves. There is a report stating that victim families prefer an alternative as said by Richard Dietis. This, this report releases the results of a new national poll which demonstrates that Americans are willing to give up the death penalty if certain sanctions are enforced. This poll and similar state opinion polls confirm that abstract support for the death penalty drops significantly when respondents are given a choice between capital punishment and sentence with a sure lengthy incarceration and compensation for the family and the, and the victim. Only 41% of the population choose the death penalty over a sentence of life without parole coupled with a effect <coughs> to the victim's family. He also says that they have the, the possibility to escape from prison. The more we experience a jailbreak, the more the security levels will build. It is more difficult and highly impossible for a criminal to escape prison. Instead of placing a criminal on death row, we have the choice of placing the criminal in lifetime incarceration so there is no possibility of parole. Another disadvantage he discussed was that if we remove capital punishment and set life in jail at the limit, then these criminals will be in the same jail for those sentenced to 25 years to life under the three strikes law. This doesn't make any difference because the criminal is already in jail for the life for life without any chance of parole. So the, street, the three strikes law doesn't really apply anymore. Think of it like this, a criminal is placed on death row and instead of death row they will receive lifetime jail, so how will the three strikes law apply? Like he mentioned, the case of Kevin, Kevin Holder not receiving death penalty because he hasn't committed murder. But Carlos does, does mention he is receiving a lot of years. Here he is <coughs> contradicting himself by agreeing that he is receiving a lot of years instead of the death penalty. A more severe crime should not result in a more severe punishment. This, uh, this, goes, back to, this goes back to punishment. It is not only shameful to those who, who the, whose it is imposed to, that it is also shameful to society that it involves in the same behavior as a criminal. Also, the fact that capital punishment hasn't been used for decades is wrong. As Douglas A. Berman states that California has the nation's largest death row with 697 inmates sentenced to die. The last ex execution was in January 2006 when convicted killer Clarence Allen was put to death by lethal injection at a state prison. He also questions that if the criminal is to die in prison, then why keep them alive? Well, it is the whole purpose of abolishing capital punishment and how the Eighth Amendment forbids cruel and unusual punishment. Wouldn't the state prefer for the criminal to die on his own, on, on his own, incarcerated for life, rather than engage in the same behavior as a criminal which is killing? My opponent also discusses how a criminal has gotten away with the crime because of insufficient evidence. Well, it is the same thing the other way around, where a victim has been set on death row and then found innocent a couple of years later. As stated by the death penalty information, the danger that the danger that innocent people will be executed because of errors in the criminal justice system is getting worse. A total of 69 people have been released from death row since 1973 after, since, after, since 1973 after evidence of their innocence emerged. This report tells that stories of people like Rolando Cruz released after 10 years on Illinois death row. Despite the fact that another, another man had confessed to the crime shortly after his confession. Or as approved by the Office of Strategic, Strategic Influence.com, the innocent case of Frank Basil McFarland was executed for a rape murder despite multiple inconsistencies in, in the state's case. Altered evidence, pictures, and incoherent testimony and su suppressed evidence of guilt. After execution, he was found innocent by DNA testing. Therefore, overall, the death penalty should still be abolished.